Good ever afternoon, everybody. We, I, I don't know if you all feel it, but we are a, a very highly exclusive group, very intimate, uh, and we will all see some things that nobody else in the world has seen yet. Well, I have, but I'm the only one, and you will be a part of this. So I hope you are very excited inside, and this small fire is starting to burn, and at the, at the end of the session, it will be like, uh, almost dangerous, but we'll see. Um, I am Niels, I am the founder of uh, Immer, and I was just thinking before this that books for modern humans, this slogan could be quite offensive to some of you, as it of course implies that all the other books before this app uh, were for ancient humans, the opposite of this. Of course, I don't mean to put it that bluntly, although I am Dutch and we are known to be blunt sometimes. Today, uh, I want to share some uh, ideas, some designs uh, with you uh, following this idea, developing new book reading styles for the smartphone. Uh, we're working on a lot of different things at Immer. Today, I want to zoom in on a small bit of it but I want to start with showing you a one minute video of the whole holistic vision that we have for the app that we are making for the phone. Uh, and I hope it speaks for itself. So we are Immer, uh, I'm going to move this a little bit here. We are a tech startup in the Netherlands in the city of Utrecht, and we're working on be a better way to read uh, books on the phone, which also happens to be a better way to use this thing that you always carry around with you. I already mentioned this, my name is Niels. Uh, I'm the CEO of the company, I used to be a writer, uh, and I've been at this for quite a while. Uh, I co-founded uh, the company together with Leonard, he is the CTO, and uh, since last year we were joined by two full-time engineers so we can uh, really have some, some development velocity. We started with this statement, books are great, uh, but how we read them is outdated. So basically, books have a lot of value, most people agree uh, with this, but still, uh, people are reading less, uh, books are losing out to other forms of storytelling, other forms of media. Uh, and what we say is it's not about the books, it is about the way we consume them. Uh, it doesn't fit in our, uh, our lives anymore and we have to come up with something better, not for the content, but for the way of consumption. Uh, that makes it fit, in, uh, fit them into our modern lives again. Uh, and this statement led to this question. Can we drastically improve how you read books uh, on that small screen? Uh, it, it is this kind of interesting juxtaposition. It's this device that we always have with us, but most people say, uh, oh, I don't read on my phone. Uh, I hate that experience. And maybe I will read digitally, but mostly the arguments for that e-reader or that tablet will be quite practical. It's easy to carry around, it fits a lot of books, it's easy to get a new book onto it. And it's not the kind of arguments that you hear about paper books, uh, where people say, oh, I just love the feeling of it. I just uh, am so proud of having this nice uh, bookcase with all these beautiful books. Uh, that is this sort of feeling of aesthetic love that you experience. Uh, 
It's not like that for digital. Uh, so yeah, with this question in mind, we started working in 2019 before, 19 before uh, starting the company. We already had some proof of concept apps. We founded the company in 2020, uh, launched in the same year a minimum viable product, as we call it. Uh, that was uh, quite successful for us. People appreciated it. Uh, people read a, read a lot in the app, even though it only had a small amount of books. Uh, and uh, some people even bought and finished whole books uh, in it. We did a test campaign that taught us a lot about our audience. Uh, we did a scientific study with Radboud University in the, in the Netherlands. And they kind of proved that some of the design inventions that we came up with were actually effective in improving the reading experience. We also won the Renew the Book Innovation Award, um, a prize uh, initiated by the Dutch publishing, uh, uh, general publishing, uh, book publishing industry. Uh, and uh, with these results, we were able to raise a new uh, investment round, could hire those uh, engineers uh, and start building the next version of our technology and app. So this year we uh, built uh, the beginnings of what we call the Immer Semantic Engine, which is basically a way to take any long text file, like EPUBs, um, extract them, analyze the content, store them in a super efficient way, not bloated and complex uh, like uh, EPUBs are, so that we have a lot of flexibility to uh, present these books in many, many different ways on a screen. And I'll show you some of that uh, in a bit. Uh, and we use this technology to already process uh, 30,000 books into our own system uh, with almost all the general book publishers in, in the Netherlands. Uh, and also, um, uh, just now we heard that uh, uh, basically the, the German version of Renew the Book is Content Shift. Uh, they have an accelerator program, and we were just as the only non-German company admitted into their top 10. So at the end of the month, hopefully, we will become one of five in their accelerator program. Uh, so that we can then take all the time and um, uh, have even more uh, expert insights that we need to build the product that we're working on right now, which is the Immer Reader, which is sort of Immer 2.0, uh, you could call it. And while the first version, the minimum viable product version, was uh, kind of aimed at what we call dormant readers, people who would want to read but don't find the time to do it, well, we found that this was quite a hard group to reach. This new app, uh, uh, and, and that app had uh, a couple hundred books uh, just for the Dutch market, which is, of course, also relatively, uh, compared to the whole world, a, a small market. The new app that we're building now uh, is aimed at avid readers uh, who already own ebooks. It won't have a store, but it'll allow you to use all those existing books and read them in a much better way on that device that you always have with uh, you. So it's called the Immer Reader. Read your ebooks better on the device that's always with you. And there's a couple of points that we sort of emphasize. Uh, you, you can import your books. Uh, we make them look uh, stunningly readable. Uh, we have the best tools for uh, navigating through a book uh, to annotate a book. We make it much easier and just nicer to do those things. More like a paper book where it's almost like you can play with the medium instead of uh, it plays with you, I suppose. And, and the final point is uh, this idea of improving your phone habit. Uh, you want to do better things with that device. You don't want to waste your time on it. You want to get to those books that you didn't read before. Now we will help you by creating, for example, sessions in 20 minute chunks a uh, couple of times a day so that you get through those books faster. So that's the big story of what we're doing with the Immer Reader. Uh, today I want to focus on uh, a, a few details, or not details, quite, quite essential concepts of the Immer app. Uh, but I want to focus uh, and zoom in on them quite closely. Um, already um, almost 10 years ago, I started thinking about um, uh, there's on this screen, on this, this powerful device, uh, 
Uh, it, it, it's this color screen that can do, do any that can do anything that you want. It has uh, even has audio. It has a network connection. The possibilities are endless. And basically, we were all uh, scrolling through text, and I was just thinking, is that all there is? Isn't there a better way to do it? I love scrolling. I think it's a great invention. I think even I, I like to say the. The engineer at Apple who built the way of scrolling that we now all use was a, is a Dutch uh, designer uh, engineer. It worked very well, but it's highly suited to scanning something, going through something quickly, looking it up. It is not very suited to actually reading. You're constantly moving your finger, your eyes are moving all the time. It, it is a very uh, high energy activity, and for reading you want to sort of slow down. Well, what, of course, uh, everybody did was trying to replicate on that screen the experience of a paper book. But then there are some downsides to how paper books work that you don't necessarily want, I thought, uh, to replicate on the, on the screen. Uh, for example, uh, often a sentence will be broken off at the end of a page, and you have to hold it in your head and then go to the next page and then continue reading where you left off. In a paper book, there is some economic uh, reason for using the, the space efficiently and filling it up on the screen that is not necessary. So I started thinking about this idea of what I call portion reading. Can't we have a really nice looking screen where there's just one bit of text that's nicer, easier to read, you just focus on that one bit that fits in more with the way we usually use the smartphone as well. And then when you're done, you tap and you go to the next one. And I thought it might even have a kind of a different kind of rhythm. Uh, but in the beginning, this was all uh, within the scope of a project I was working on. Uh, I was writing a novella that I wanted to publish digitally. Um, we were thinking about how can we add multimedia elements without distracting from the from the text. And there had been a lot of enhanced reading with videos and audio, but it pulled you out of the text. So I wanted to make something that integrated all of that. And these portions also came out of the idea of if I control portion by portion what the reader will read, uh, I can also, alongside those portions, change the colors, change the audio. Um, so next I'll show you a little a movie as well, and I invite you to, to read along with it and see if it uh, works somewhat. This is uh, a, a project called Lotus that we put out uh, three, three years ago. So that was Lotus. Um, it, I, I think it turned out quite well. Not a lot of people read it as it goes with these kinds of experiments. Uh, but we did have the opportunity with this project to test a lot in different kinds of settings. And one thing that kept coming up is, oh, that, that reading in portions, these small bits, that is so nice. People said uh, things like, I open up a paper book, I try to read it, but the words just come at me and I can't focus. But with this, uh, it's really easy for me. And a kind of a light bulb went off in my head, like, oh, this, this small idea that was a part of this project should be explored further. Um, so I worked together with uh, the author Arnold Grunberg, a uh, Dutch author, and instead of creating a new story just for this format, we tried to see what would happen if we would take his existing books and uh, make them readable portion by portion. And uh, yeah, it worked quite well. People really liked it. And that was the start of Immer. We decided to hone in on this idea of portions, build other features around it, and uh, yeah, the rest of his, his history, kind of. So 
when I talk about a portion, what is it exactly? Um, I already mentioned most of it. It's, it's the book that's broken up automatically. So later in the Immer app, we, uh, we have this intelligence to take a text, to see where paragraphs are, to see how paragraphs can be spread over multiple screens. Um, when a paragraph turns out to be too small, too, too long for the screen, um, oh yeah, and, and this has the, 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 the uh, advantage that a sentence is never broken off, almost, because sometimes an author will have a field day and uh, have a chapter that's only one long sentence, well then we, break, we have to break it up anyways. And when we do, or when we break off a, a paragraph that is too long, we use these uh, three middle dots uh, to indicate that so that you know a little bit of the context of where you're in. Uh, and then also this little ring here shows you uh, some additional context like the size of the book, uh, the position in it so you feel with your thumbs where you are. This similarly shows you where you are uh, actually in the, in, the, in the session, which is another concept, and this little ring in the middle shows you the progress within the book. Uh, so, uh, what worked about this? Um, most people, uh, this is something that kept returning in every test that we did. People like reading in this way. Uh, and they say they want to do it more often. Uh, as said, we studied this with uh, Radboud. And they showed that uh, the reading experience improves. There was even some evidence that it helps you focus, uh, helps you memorize uh, the text better because you pay more attention to it uh, this way. Uh, and also, uh, we think it looks quite cool, uh, a little bit like an Instagram story, which is what people mention uh, often. But we also saw a lot of room for improvement. What, uh, so, so what could be improved? Well, uh, one thing that we heard a lot uh, from people is, this is, I think, uh, one thing that we learned about audiences. Some people will say, oh, this is nice, uh, but can't you fill up the screen a little bit more? Can't you have a little bit more text? While the other group says uh, the opposite. Uh, it's still too much. Can it be even, even less? Uh, and another problem was that there was not a lot of flexibility on our side, technologically speaking, uh, to adjust for these things. And we couldn't adjust the font size. We couldn't adjust the portion uh, size. And also, even though it looked quite cool, uh, everybody agreed, we felt it was still not distingu distinguished enough. Like it's clearly not the same as a paper book, but it still looks quite book-like. And we thought that to create this real 21st century new type of reading, we had to do more. Uh, and then finally, and importantly for this uh, talk, with this setup, even though we have a couple of things that help you get the context of where you are in the book, uh, it is still undeniably less than it is when you're reading a paper book. I think this is uh, a problem for all kinds of digital reading. It was also mentioned today a few times, uh, but especially with this small screen and with this small portion, it is uh, an issue. And you don't know where you are on the page, you don't know where you are in the chapter, where you are in the book. So this is something that we felt, uh, <laughs> like we believe that you can do, can solve anything with technology and design if you only work at it, if you do your research, if you talk to people, if you try things. Uh, so this is something that we wanted to focus on. Uh, so we came up with a few solutions. We had to build a much more flexible text engine. Well, as I told you, we did, we have it now. Um, so that we could offer multiple reading styles for different kinds of readers, so that everybody can have their way of reading. Uh, if you are a traditional book reader and you want to read on your phone much like you would a paper book, well, sure, you can. But if you don't like reading that much and we, you, you really want us to pull you into this book reading experience, we can do that for you by taking liberties that wouldn't be possible uh, normally. And, and I guess the nice thing about having multiple styles is also that in the one you can be more traditional and, and then in the less traditional one you can be even more unorthodox. Um, and before, we were trying to kind of have a one-size-fits-all solution for everybody. Uh, and of course, the solution was we have to create, uh, work on that increasing, uh, increasing the context of reading. So a little bit about uh, uh, this idea of context. 
Uh, I would say that there are four, probably more, but I've identified four types of context when you're reading. The first one is where are you within the full book? Uh, you, this is your position, you see, oh, I'm at two thirds uh, about, and you just feel it. You feel it in your fingers, you know this deeply. It's, it's kind of, uh, there's this idea of uh, em embodied cognition. Uh, you feel it in your fingers and that helps you understand it helps you connect to it. And this is the first one, the position within the book. The second is, uh, where are you on the page, uh, on the spread? Hey, you have these two pages in front of you, and you know, you feel, you experience where you are in, on those pages. And the third one is, is like uh, related to paragraphs and sentences, like uh, where am I related to this bit of text and the next one? Oh, this is a short one, this is a long one. You just, in, in your peripheral vision, you feel that. And then the third one is uh, chapters and, and sections as well. Uh, there's a big blank space coming up. Oh, I guess I'm at the end of the chapter now. Uh, and uh, I don't know about you, but for me this plays a big part in reading. I'm always looking like how many pages are there still in the chapter? Uh, can I finish this uh, before I have to make uh, dinner? Uh, all these kinds of questions are always going through your head kind of reading strategies that you apply uh, at, um, um, in flight. So how can we uh, create something for these, kind of simulate or, or emulate or create something that kind of does these kinds of things but on a small screen? Well, I think some of them, especially the, the, uh, the, the full book one, uh, we are solving with some of our um, navigation features. So we're working on what we call the book navigator. Uh, the book navigator. And that shows you what the book, book looks like. You can just scroll through it and see kind of the shape of the book. Uh, a longer book will be three screens, a shorter book will be two. And each chapter as well, it just shows you how long it is, with even uh, a bigger paragraph breaks uh, within it. Uh, and this is not always visible, but when you want it, you can open it. And we also have a thing, uh, won't go into detail now, but where you can quickly browse a, th a few pages, and then a small version of this book navigator appears on the side. So it's all meant to give you this kind of peripheral understanding of your position within the book. Uh, also, the, the progress ring uh, that's, at the bottom, that's still at the bottom of the screen, we upgraded it a little bit, and now it has these segments on it. So that if within this session that you're reading, of say 20 minutes, and there are a couple of chapters within it, well, you see that and you know what you can expect uh, within that time frame. Um, but for those other ones, like position on the page and uh, in paragraph elements and in chapter elements, we had to dig a little deeper, get a little more creative. Um, and we started thinking about uh, what we started calling a uh, pause intent. Like the, the, a, a reader, of, uh, sorry, a writer, uh, he writes words or she writes words, uh, but not, uh, maybe the, 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 the clue is not in the words, but it's in between the words, right? The different ways you can pause between words. So, I mean, you all know this, but let's take this little bit of uh, War of the Worlds uh, and, and see what goes on here. Uh, so this is uh, a chapter or a bit of a chapter that's indicated by uh, a title. Then there are uh, paragraphs. And here's something special is going on, this is yeah, in, in Dutch we have different words for a paragraph, uh, a paragraph and a paragraph, but in English it's not so easy. So we call uh, this a sub, uh, and so uh, what I want to say is it's about the breaks. And we call this, uh, oh actually it should be here, we call this a sub paragraph break, and we call this a paragraph break. I'm sure other people came up with other terms that also work quite well, but this works for us. Uh, and then, of course, that's not the only thing. There are also a bunch of uh, sentence breaks. And, uh, well, a, a lot more, but I didn't feel like marking them all. So um, we came up with uh, kind of an, 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 an analysis technique. 
and a way of thinking about these kinds of breaks, and we kind of made a classification of it, of the different pauses. Uh, and the higher you get, or uh, the, the lower you get in the list, the longer the pause is. So you could even see uh, the syllables of a word as a sub-word break, and then a break between words, a word break, a sub-sentence break is at a comma, a sentence break is, a, is at a period, and these kinds of things, uh, and so on, until uh, the section break, and then I guess there could be uh, hypothetically books with super section breaks and super, super, super section breaks, but the, the list would get even longer. Um, and we made something to detect these kinds of breaks and sort of see the different ones. Uh, uh, and then we could use that to visualize the books in a very specific way. And we created something for this because we wanted to visualize them. Uh, and we call this uh, break markers. Um, so, um, yeah, before I get to the, the real break markers, I guess that little mark, the, 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 the three mid dots that we had before, we turned it into a small uh, stripe now. I guess that's a kind of break marker as well. Uh, this still indicates uh, the paragraph is still going on, it's not finished, and on the next screen it continues, um, and uh, well, like that. For the subparagraph break, uh, we have this uh, tradition of using an indent, that works quite well, so we can, we can do it here. But uh, for the paragraph break, we decided we needed something more uh, dramatic. Uh, so that's this. And the crux of it is, uh, this is already quite uh, interesting, because if it wasn't there, how would you know that there was a paragraph break at all? It would be in between those two screens, and maybe on the next screen there would not be an indent, but it's kind of subtle. Um, and, and the crux about this is that this marker is not just at the end of this screen, it's also at the beginning of the next. Um, and then the next one is for chapter breaks. How do you know that the chapter is ending? Well, this is what tells you now. Uh, and then, of course, at the beginning of the next chapter, you see the continuation, you understand that, oh, whenever I see a big chunk like that, I know that I'm nearing the end of the chapter. Um, this was all quite nice and dandy, but we thought, oh, we can do more. Um, and uh, yeah, I said before, we have the flexibility to, to offer different reading styles to different readers. And we started thinking about what we call this style uh, traditional. And we started thinking about what could a modern reading style in our app uh, look like. And actually, we did something that we, when we first thought of it, thought was a little bit on the radical side, but that was for us a reason to say, yes, let's try it. Uh, to, uh, this is the same text. To take each sentence and show that separately on the screen. And as soon as we started testing this, started prototyping it, it gave a kind of a fresh breath, and, and it immediately gave the sense of, oh, yeah, I think this makes it a little bit easier to read. And we started testing it with a few people, and they confirmed it. They felt uh, this was quite nice. Uh, so uh, an interesting, more modern way to read the same great books. Um, but of course, uh, adding a line of white space like this for every sentence creates a bit of a problem, because what if there is an actual, if there would normally be an actual line of white space? So, uh, but, but luckily, we already had a system for that. We had the break markers. So now, if the end of the subparagraph uh, happens, there's this, uh, uh, this break marker. And we came up with a, an even more dramatic one for when there is a paragraph break. And we used uh, this effect. So it's like, uh, it's not as, as dramatic as a new chapter, but it is quite a dramatic uh, transition. Uh, and then in the modern style, when you near the end of the chapter, there's this same kind of uh, big block uh, again. Uh, so that's the idea of break markers. Uh, we're uh, quite excited about it and uh, can't wait to actually put it in the app and uh, start testing this with actual users. Um, and we also think that there, there, there's still a lot more to be done here. So that's what we're going to do. We will uh, experiment more 
uh, we did this little test with uh, uh, this uh, open dyslectic uh, font, and this uh, test actually breaks off at the sub-sentence level, at commas. So the idea is that for people uh, who are challenged readers, this might help uh, them. Uh, <laughs> and we thought that this really started looking like uh, Instagram story kind of things. You could also do uh, fancy things like uh, uh, drop caps. All those things become really easy in our app. And um, another thing that our designers have been thinking about is like, what if you vary, uh, depending on how long the sentences are, what if you vary the font sizes a little bit to emphasize things? Of course, those get uh, quite complicated because if something is larger, you may think it's more important. So. Yeah, th those are just things that we have to try. Another part that we, we feel is really uh, interesting is the idea that uh, we can do procedural things. So um, uh, the colors that you see, um, uh, so far we just picked nice colors that we, that we and our designers thought were beautiful and that people responded well to, but we uh, are now thinking about making it more dynamic. So for example, taking color from a book cover and using that uh, to paint the reading experience a little bit in a subtle way that doesn't distract, et cetera. Um, but we've been also experimenting with, uh, there are all these uh, natural language processing libraries where for example, you can take a piece of text and say, uh, how many negative words are there in this paragraph? Um, and then you could use that information to, for example, increase the, the, the red component of the color a little bit, so it becomes a little bit more red and more intense. Um, those are all ideas that we want to explore further to see what will happen to these kinds of reading styles. Um, but then there's also the, the element, and I'm not sure who said it today, uh, th th this morning, but this idea that in digital reading, there's much less of a role for designers, for uh, illustrators, for these kinds of people. And we think that with this technology, we have, we are kind of building this, this platform on which um, artists, uh, designers, could build many new ideas. And they could come up with different kind of uh, break markers or other elements that are in the text. I would find it important that the Text always has center stage. It is about reading, it is about this reading experience that is so unique, but still I think there are a lot of things that you can do. Um, there, and there are a lot of things uh, uh, that are hard about trying to design for a screen. Not just because of the screen, but because there are so many screens. Like this has to work on an iPad as well. It should work in the browser as well. Uh, but we can create a toolkit that makes it easier for these kinds of uh, creative people to come up with something that works in all those situations. Uh, it's our job to make it work for every scenario. Um, and they could make uh, new reading styles that somebody could choose uh, to read a book in. They could also make specific reading styles for types of books, for specific genres, uh, for uh, romance novels. Uh, but they could also make specific styles for specific books. Andrew. Can you give us a <coughs> sort of a picture of the book? The way you're doing it now is becoming quite intrusive in a way, I would say. Relative to the other things in the world today. So would you say it's a principle that you're only showing the raw elements of the way that you're reading this book and you're showing actually the people who think Uh, that's a good question, and I agree that it is a tension. Um, I think the day-to-day the -day state in a lot of cases is that, especially reading on that super small screen, uh, <laughs> this is maybe the wrong screen to stand in front of in this discussion because these are just uh, extreme examples. I, I would say that these kinds of things are a little less uh, spectacular in that sense uh, or intrusive. Uh, the choice would be, like, do you want a mediocre uh, uh, black and white text on your small screen or something that is tailor-made for that screen? 
Uh, and yeah, but I agree, it's, an, it's, it's, a, it's becoming a very different thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do think that what's new about this is that we can automatically take any book and do this with it. And before that, it was either you have this uh, very default, very standard experience, or you have a custom designed app that is a lot of work and a lot of money to create. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, I agree that there's a new situation there that, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, can I ask you to hold your question uh, so that I can finish the presentation and then after that we may have some time to answer more. Um, I wanted to also show that, um, importantly, so there's a lot of experimentation to done with typography, with colors, with these kinds of special typographic elements. Um, but a lot of it, I think, is uh, 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 also about how it moves. It is about animation. And we think, and this is something that we uh, discovered early on, um, when you're reading, you want uh, nothing should happen. It should be a static experience and you should be able to just focus on the text. But the transition between two screens is an opportunity to give something extra, to make something extra happen. That can help with communicating the kinds of things that we're trying to solve with these break markers. It's also an opportunity to make it look interesting. It could be an opportunity for artists to create something that didn't exist before. And here's a little test. I mean, we're quite far with the app, but these kinds of animations are now the thing that we're working hard on and trying to figure out the details of. Here's a sm small sne sneak peek of how these kinds of transitions might look in, uh, in action. Yeah, so, so importantly, these kinds of markers are not just indicators at the end or the beginning of a screen. They're actually elements that move along with the text and show you the, the relationship between these separate disjointed elements. And, and they in that process become more jointed. Um, so to summarize, reading styles and break markers uh, we think they will make phone reading easier and nicer for different types of readers not trying to solve uh, everything for all kinds of readers with one single solution. Um, and importantly, it will offer a new creative opportunity uh, for, for, for artists and designers uh, that doesn't distract from the text. Uh, that's the core of this, this whole thing. Uh, a more evolved version of reading on that device you have with you. Uh, so our plan is to come up with a great default. Uh, and uh, I totally agree it's about this finding a, a sweet spot where it's clear that something distinguished is going on. It's different from a normal digital book, but also um, uh, it should st still be the writer's and the publisher's party, I suppose, if that's a way to put it. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm curious like uh, what this triggers for you and what kinds of things that you would come up with if you had the power to make anything happen on the screen to make a book reading experience uh, better. Wrapping up, uh, we're working on this international early access launch uh, that's coming this summer. You can use all those eBooks that you already have, try to see what happens, if it is too intrusive or if it's just really nice. Um, uh, you can already sign up if you're interested. I mean, some of us are already connected on LinkedIn. If we're not, do add me and let's stay in touch uh, so that uh, we can all put you in this international uh, early access and you can help us test it and see what you think. Uh, and, and don't be shy, be, be Dutch, uh, be blunt. Uh, that helps us the most. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's it. Uh, thanks for your attention. And uh, if there are any questions, uh, I'm really uh, happy to answer. <laughs>